Hi, I'm Tom Blomain. Welcome to Graffiti. We're here in downtown Scranton in the pub known as The Banshee, and we're going to read some great Irish poetry today. Let's see what we have. You don't mind if I stand here and read some poetry, do you? I did a little research just today on the name the Banshee, what, what the Banshee is, knowing we were going to come here. I thought this would be kind of cool. The Banshee, people of Irish descent might know, but uh, is an ancestral spirit, a female fairy. And what the uh, Banshee did was cry out on the night before someone was going to die. That's what the legend of the Banshee is, so you'd hear the howling of the Banshee. And often, according to Irish legend, the Banshee might appear in one of three guises. That of a young woman, a stately matron, or an old hag. So the uh, Banshee would, the sound of the Banshee was a thin screeching sound somewhere between the wail of a woman and the moan of an owl. It's the legend of the Banshee. Irish poetry goes back many centuries and the catalog of great Irish poets is just so extensive that we could only do a few here today. I selected some of my favorite Irish poets over the past century or so and uh, we'll read some of them today starting with the great and famous Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was born in Dublin in 1854 and had a storied and glorious life. Uh, a fantastic writer and wit. This poem is called The Harlot's House, which was published initially in 1885. We caught the tread of dancing feet. We loitered down the moonlit street and stopped beneath the harlot's house. Inside, above the din and fray, we heard the loud musicians play the true leave hers of Strauss. Like strange mechanical grotesques making fantastic arabesques, the shadows raced across the blind. We watched the ghostly dancers spin to sound of horn and violin, like black leaves wheeling in the wind. Like wire-pulled automatons, slim silhouetted skeletons went sidling through the slow quadrille. They took each other by the hand and danced a stately saraband. Their laughter echoed thin and shrill. Sometimes a clockwork puppet pressed a phantom lover to her breast. Sometimes they seemed to try to sing. Sometimes a horrible marinette came out and smoked its cigarette upon the step like a live thing. Then. Turning to my love, I said, the dead are dancing with the dead. The dust is whirling with the dust. But she, she heard the violin and left my side and entered in. Love passed into the house of lust. Then suddenly the tune went false. The dancers wearied of the waltz. The shadow ceased to wheel and whirl. And down the long and silent street, the dawn with silver sandaled feet, crept like a frightened girl. That's Oscar Wilde's poem, The Harlot's House. Any reading of Irish poetry would not be complete without bringing in the great William Butler Yeats, who was born in Sligo in 1865. A huge body of work from William Butler Yeats, very influential poet. Uh, this poem is called The Sorrow of Love. The quarrel of the sparrows in the eaves, the full round moon and the star-laden sky, and the loud song of the ever-singing leaves had hid away earth's old and weary cry. And then you came with those red mournful lips, and with you came the whole of the world's tears, and all the trouble of her laboring ships, 
and all the trouble of her myriad years. And now the sparrows warring in the eaves, the curd pale moon, the white stars in the sky, and the loud chaunting of the unquiet leaves are shaken with earth's old and weary cry. That's Yeats's poem, The Sorrow of Love. The Irish poet James Stevens was born in uh, 1880 and uh, wrote sometimes humorous verse. This particular poem was read by the great Welsh poet Dylan Thomas uh, as he did his uh, infamous tours and readings throughout the United States. And very appropriate to an establishment such as this, the name of this poem is A Glass of Beer. The lanky hank of a she in the inn over there nearly killed me for asking the loan of a glass of beer. May the devil grip the whey-faced slut by the hair and beat bad manners out of her skin for a year. That parboiled ape with the toughest jaw you will see on virtue's path and a voice that would rasp the dead came roaring and raging the minute she looked at me and threw me out of the house on the back of my head. If I asked her master, he'd give me a cask a day, but she, with the beer at hand, not a gill would arrange. May she marry a ghost and bear him a kitten, and may the high king of glory permit her to get the mange. That's James Stevens' poem, A Glass of Beer. The famous Irish poet Samuel Beckett lived uh, much of his life in France, winner of the Nobel Prize wrote much fiction and some of his poetry is uh, very odd and very provocative. This, this particular short poem of Samuel Beckett's is called Echoes Bones. Asylum under my tread all this day, their muffled revels as the flesh falls, breaking without fear or favor wind, the cantaloupe of sense and nonsense run, taken by the maggots for what they are. Samuel Beckett's poem, Echoes Bones, that was published initially in 1935. This poem is by the uh, Northern Irish poet, W.R. Rogers. It's called Armagh. There is a through otherness about Armagh of tower and steeple. Up on the hill are the arguing graves of the kings, and below are the people. Through other as the rocks that swoop and swap over the sober hill, go the people gallivanting from shop to shop, guffawing their fill. And the little houses run through the market town, slap up against the grate like the farmers all clabber and muck walking arm by arm with the men of estate. Raised at a time when reason was all the rage of gray and equal stone, this bland face of Armagh cowers in age of clay and feather and bone. Through other in its history of Celt and Dane, Norman and Saxon, who ruled the place and sounded the gamut of fame from Cowhorn to Claxon. There is a through otherness about Armagh delightful to see. Up on the hill are the graves of the garrulous kings who at last can agree. That poem was published in 1954 and addresses the history of Ireland as a separated country. And Rogers, being from Northern Ireland, obviously had a different view of uh, things than some of the other writers I'm reading here who were from the south of Ireland, the Republic. This is a poem by the uh, poet uh, Thomas Kinsella. He was born in Dublin in 1928. This particular poem is called First Light. A prone couple still sleeps. Light ascends like a pale gas out of the sea. Dawn light reaching across the hill to the dark garden. The grass emerges, 
soaking with gray dew. Inside, in silence, an empty kitchen takes form, tidied and swept, blank with marriage, where shrill lover and beloved have kept another vigil far into the night and raved and wept. Upstairs, a whimper or sigh comes from an open bedroom door and lengthens to an ugly wail. A child enduring a dream that grows at the first touch of day, unendurable. That's Thomas Kinsella's poem, First Light. This is a poem by the uh, poet from Limerick, Desmond O'Grady, born in 1935, called The Poet Loves From Afar. I think I shall live for a while a bit gamely and stop making out to be what I'm not. The strong-minded women who turn men tamely, without a doubt, are a dangerous lot. Although it's the woman of beauty and stature that unmarried men most want to wed, a girl called Grain, the girl I'm after, is the woman I like to take to my bed. If I had the choice in the pick of all women, the finest in Ireland and Scotland and France, I'd like nothing more than a night's wild loving with that young one I saw at the crossroads dance. This poet, the very famous contemporary poet uh, from Ireland, born in County Derry, Seamus Haney. I met him. Seamus Haney, I met him. You met Seamus Haney? At UMass at Amherst, he was speaking there. Really? Yeah, when Beowulf came out. Do, well, do you know the poem, Docker? I probably read it, but I don't know it. Yeah, read it. You want me to read the poem? Yeah, I want you to read it. All right, okay. stand up, stand up. <laughs> yeah, stand okay. up and read it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, Docker. There, in the corner, staring at his drink. The cap juts like a gantry's crossbeam, cowling plated forehead and sledgehead jaw. Speech is clamped in the lips of ice. That fist would drop a hammer on a Catholic. Oh yes, that kind of thing could start again. The only Roman caller he tolerates smiles all round his sleek pint of porter. Mosaic imperatives bang home like rivets. God is a foreman with certain definite views who orders life in shifts of work and leisure. A factory horn will blare the resurrection. He sits strong and blunt as a Celtic cross, clearly used to silence and an armchair. Tonight the wife and children will be quiet at slammed door and smokers cough in the hall. Well, thanks for joining us on this edition of Graffiti here in the Banshee in downtown Scranton. I hope you enjoyed the uh, Irish poets we read today. And thanks to our bystander who was uh, willing to read Seamus Haney. We appreciate it. Join us again for Graffiti in the next week or so. Meanwhile, I'm Tom Blomain. See ya.